Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Chris Reichert. I am your virtual presenter or your V-host, shall we say. And on this YouTube video, what I'd like to do is um, tell you guys a little bit about myself, like introduce myself. I'm, I'm new to this YouTube channel thing and what I'd really wanna do with this big endeavor is to bring you guys some tips and tricks on how to present. And presenting is a huge wide range of, of skills and, and tricks and things you need to know in order to communicate with your audience. So I've worked in broadcast media for about 20 to 25 years. I was an MTV VJ. I was a television presenter for a lot of programs. And then I also was a radio host for about 13 years, broadcasting to over 5 million listeners on a daily basis. Now recently with this whole pandemic and with everything going online, what I've done is I've kind of reinvented myself and I've brought all of my skills and all of my know-how and I've put that on a virtual platform so that I can help you guys out and teach you on how to really achieve you know your maximum when it comes to communicating and having a strong presence when you're either on a stage or in front of a camera and how to captivate your audience all of those things but before I get into the real skill that I learned the real the real that real nugget that I never expected would have helped me so much in my career. Um, and where I got that golden nugget from, you know, it was a very, very, very popular television show. It was probably one of the biggest options for teenagers and for young kids coming home from school and plugging this show on or this channel on because there weren't a lot of options. You know, there was no Netflix. There was no, I don't know, I live in Italy, so there was no Sky. There were no satellite television stations where you have all of these options. So kids would plug on MTV. And that's where I started my career in broadcast media. And that's where I learned the most important skill, which is the art of improvising. So before we get into it, I just wanted to remind you all to click the little beautiful red button there on the bottom that says subscribe so you can subscribe to my channel and I can teach you a bunch of tips and tricks on how to present, how to captivate your audience, how to really, really communicate well with the people you're talking to, whether it be online, offline, in front of a camera, in front of a, an audience, on stage, you name it, at a wedding, <laughs> whatever it might be. I'm here to help out with that. So, as I said, this week I'd like to talk about the art of improvising. The art of improvising. The art of improvising. What I would do when I was a little girl is in our basement, actually, we had this structure above the washing machine in the basement of this house that I grew up in in Canada. And there was, um, it was like a wooden structure and there was a, a hole for a television cut into the wooden structure. And you could climb on top of the washing machine and there was a platform, a wooden platform, and I would get up and behind this hole in the wall shaped as a television set and I would broadcast. I would pretend I was a news broadcaster and that was my dream as a little girl. And so I would get up behind that thing and I would bring my stuffed animals. Maybe I would give the weather forecast or maybe I would talk about the events of the household or what was going on in the neighborhood and I would give the news and I would ask for my audience to come down and sit in front of this uh, opening where I would be broadcasting live to them and they would be watching, you know, Chris Reichert as their television host in the basement of our townhouse outside of Toronto in Canada. So that's how I kind of got the whole desire to be on television and the desire to present and to talk to people and to communicate. And it's kind of, it's kind of strange and funny and ironic that I never ended up becoming a news broadcaster. So my first gig was the MTV gig. After I modeled for about five years, I was freelance modeling in between Milan and Bologna where I, where I was living. That was great, that was great, that was, a, that was a lot of fun. And that allowed me to meet my ultimate best friend and work partner. Her name is also Chris, she's American. And when we met it was like love at first sight. It was like the best friendship 
ever. And so when I heard that MTV Italy or MTV Europe was casting for new VJs, I was like, I so want a part of this. So what I did is I told my best friend, Chris, the other Chris, about this idea to propose ourselves as a duo act for MTV. She loved the idea. We threw together this demo, sent it into MTV. They loved us called us in for a bunch of auditions. Fast forward, I don't know, six months later after a bunch of auditions that were not easy, mind you. And each time we auditioned, there were more and more incredibly beautiful and international women in the waiting room waiting to audition. But we had this thing, we had this special thing. We were a duo act and we were really similar. We were both blonde at the time. We had, you know, this irony about us. We had this accent, like this American Canadian accent when we spoke Italian. So we got the job. We hosted shows like, uh, dance Floor Chart, MTV on the Beach, Stylissimo, which is a fashion-based show being obviously, you know, in Milan where all of the biggest designers and stylists uh, live and thrive. And so we started this whole MTV adventure and I mean it was such a ride. Those are the days where we flew first class everywhere and we flew all over the world and we filmed programs everywhere and we interviewed all of the stars. I've interviewed so many huge celebrities on red carpets for the MTV Europe Music Awards. I've presented on the stages live on red carpets for the entire globe for the MTV Europe Music Awards. And so it becomes really easy and natural to be even talking to people that are on a certain level because you're right there with them. You know, you're going live on that red carpet. They're pulling out of a limousine and Puff Daddy or the Spice Girls at the time, they were the big ones. Um, you're interviewing them, you know, and you're your colleagues in a way. You're, you're on the same level. You're kind of doing what they're doing. So there's this naturalness involved with, with communicating and presenting. But the thing about MTV Italy, which was the real interesting part of it, is that they were, they were I don't want to slam them. I mean, it was a great, it, they were fantastic, but they were very unorganized and they didn't have enough people, enough staff to cover all of the different roles. So when we would go traveling and we would be filming on uh, the beach in Miami or in San Diego, or we'd fly down to Mexico and we'd be in Cancun and filming on the beaches, we were doing MTV on the beach from all over the best beaches, most beautiful beaches all over the world. So they would just like put us, the, the production crew, that hardly spoke a word of English, so we would be translating to the cameramen that were American, of course. So they would set the whole camera scene up and they would put us in this gorgeous situation. You know, we'd be in front of um, the beautiful sea or the ocean on this gorgeous white beach and they'd put us there and all of a sudden our director would be like, okay, five, four, three, two, one, you're on. What the hell am I going to talk about? Like, we don't have any scripts. We don't know where we're going with this. What do we do? So we learned to improvise. So, you know, the first thing we did was take a look at your environment, your settings. Like, where are you? What's around you? Comment on what's going on around you. Easy as anything. Talk about your scenery. Talk about the type of people you see. Talk about the style of bathing suits. Talk about the gorgeous trees, the nature, the sea. Talk about how much you wanna jump in the sea as soon as you're done filming. Then move on to the next thing. So if you're presenting something, you're on a stage, you're in front of your camera, your telephone, get excited. Get excited about the content. Get your audience to feel what you're feeling. Another form of improvising is if something happens, like your camera falls, if something happens like you crash into somebody because you're not looking, you add that to your content. Be grateful for anything that you're forced to improvise about because that gives you more content to what it is you're giving. So in a way, those MTV days were, I mean, they were, they were so fresh and clean, there were no, preconceived ideas. We were just getting into this. We didn't even know what we were doing. That was the beauty of it. It was so fresh and so new that improvising was just part of the game. And I'm grateful for MTV Italy being so unorganized that we had to improvise because that set the stage to do anything after that. You know, then when I went on to do other television shows. If something happened, like some technical error, maybe you're live on, on television and some tech error happens, instead of freezing, you know what to do. 
you know how to roll with it. You talk about it, you don't hide it. The worst thing you can ever do is if you've got something that takes place that was not planned, you do not hide that from your audience. That's the best kind of content, actually. You use it, you're like, oh, yes, great, I've got some new content, I can ad-lib this, and then I can even create some more fun for my audience to get into. If you can, and if you're particularly funny, um, crack a joke about it. Then you get people laughing, you get them distracted, and you get them off of what's actually happening, which is your technical error. Maybe all of a sudden you send to something, they're not ready for you, the band's not ready, so you've got like another minute to waste. You've got to ad lib in that kind of way. If you've got a live audience, this is key. This is key to improvising, you know, just rolling with the punches. And trust me, in uh, any kind of, of broadcasting or presenting, you've got to roll with some kind of punches. So this also prepares you for life in general, you know, life in general, what do you do in life? I mean, how, much, how many punches does life throw your way? How many punches? A lot. Like, for example, I'm really hoping right now that you can't pick up in this microphone I've got on, my six-year-old playing Minecraft and acting like he's a gamer and being really loud about it in the other room. And I've asked him about five times to keep his voice down, but, but um, he's got a hard time keeping his voice down. So that's improvising. And I'm sharing with you what's going on in the background. I'm, I'm actually drawing attention to it. I'm not hiding it. Because if you guys have heard some little, I don't know, yells and children's voices coming in, hey, that's life. I'm rolling with the punches. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it's going to distract you entirely from what I'm talking to you about. So we'll just keep it. We'll just... We'll just uh, <laughs> we'll just roll with this. So I guess what I really just wanted to share with all of you by doing this YouTube video is how important it is to know how to roll with something that you didn't plan for, how to think about something when you pull a blank, how to come up with content when you don't have any so that you won't find yourself pulling those blanks and you won't find yourself looking like a fool or having your audience embarrassed for you, which is, I'll get to that in another video, that's probably one of the number one things to avoid if you ever can, how to not have your audience get embarrassed for you, okay? But more than anything, this was kind of more for when you've got a live audience in front of you, when you're presenting, when you're doing some kind of communication, and how to improv when you find yourself in a situation where you don't know what to say. And that is something that I will forever be grateful for because MTV, in its disorganization, kind of pushed me to be able to improvise well and how to use that in every other area of my life since then. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget, if you haven't yet, to subscribe. Click that gorgeous red button on the bottom there. Uh, give a like to this video. Any comments you might have, anything you'd like me to talk about in a next video on presenting skills, then just write it in the comments below, and I'll be sure to make my next video on, on what it is that you guys request, okay? This is uh, Chris Reichert signing up for today. So I really appreciate you guys watching. I really appreciate any comments you leave. Uh, I really appreciate all the, all the people that subscribe and give me a thumbs up and I will see you on the next video.